development of green hydrogen production capacity of at least 5 million metric ton per annum. Over 8 lakh crore in total investments. Creation of over 6 lakh jobs. Cumulative reduction in fossil fuel imports of over 1 lakh crore. Abatement of nearly 50 million metric ton of annual greenhouse gas emissions. Making India a leading producer and supplier of green hydrogen in the world. India is undertaking a resolute march towards a sustainable energy future. It has announced a target of energy independence by 2047 and a net zero by 2070. The thrust towards low carbon economy currently hinges on an accelerated transition towards a higher share of renewables in the electricity grid complemented by electrification of end uses such as transportation. विश्व में लीड ले रहा है वो है ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन का नेशनल ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन मिशन 21वीं सदी के भारत को नई दिशा देगा Welcome viewers, you're watching this special presentation of Sunset TV with your host Pratim Mishra. Today Sunset TV has boarded India's first hydrogen fuel cell bus. In this edition, we've packed everything for you. What makes hydrogen the fuel of future? What does India's green hydrogen mission mean for its energy transition and much more? So come with me on this green and clean journey. India's deep commitment to aspirational climate goals has been widely acknowledged in the Committee of Nations. Our achievements have matched our ambition. India is the fastest growing renewable energy capacity in the world. It has also emerged as one of the most attractive destinations for investments in renewables. As India has set its sight on becoming energy independent by 2047 and achieving net zero, by 2070, the role of green hydrogen assumes paramount importance. India, with its vast renewable energy sources, also has the opportunity to produce green hydrogen for the world. The National Green Hydrogen Mission aims to provide a comprehensive action plan for establishing a green hydrogen ecosystem and catalyzing a systemic response to the opportunities and challenges in this sunrise sector. As India's growth story unfolds, its demand for energy and resources is set to rise. Energy use has doubled in the last 20 years and is likely to grow by at least another 25% by 2030. India currently imports over 40% of its primary energy requirements, worth over 90 billion US dollars every year. Major sectors like mobility and industrial production are significantly dependent on imported fossil fuels. This mandates a shift towards technologies that enable enhanced share of renewable sources in the energy mix and progressively reducing the reliance on fossil fuels. Green hydrogen is produced using renewable energy and has the potential to play a key role in such low-carbon and self-reliant economic pathways. The initial outlay for the mission will be 19,744 crore, including an outlay of 17,490 crore for the site program, 1,466 crore for pilot projects, 400 crore for R&D and 388 crore towards other mission components. Green hydrogen is produced by the process of electrolysis, where water is split into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity generated from renewable source like solar, wind or hydropower. This process results in a clean and emission-free fuel that has immense potential to replace fossil fuels and reduce carbon emissions. Another method of producing green hydrogen is from biomass, which involves the gasification of biomass to produce hydrogen. 
both these production methods are clean and sustainable, making green hydrogen an attractive option for the transition to a low-carbon economy. Green hydrogen can enable utilization of domestically abundant renewable energy sources across regions, seasons and sectors, feeding multiple usage streams, either as a fuel or as an industrial feedstock. It can directly replace fossil fuel-derived feedstocks in petroleum refining, fertilizer production and steel manufacturing. Hydrogen-fueled long-haul automobiles and marine vessels can enable decarbonization of the mobility sector. Green hydrogen can be particularly useful as a versatile energy carrier for meeting energy requirements of remote geographies, including islands, in a sustainable manner. The green hydrogen pathway can be a key enabler for India's aspirations of building a low-carbon and self-reliant economy. It was therefore an opportune moment for India to launch the National Green Hydrogen Mission to scale up green hydrogen production and utilization across multiple sectors and align with global trends in technology, applications, policy and regulation. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy will be responsible for the overall coordination for implementation of the mission. Ministry of Power will implement policies and regulations to ensure delivery of renewable energy for green hydrogen production at least possible costs. The green hydrogen green ammonia will become feedstock instead of coal. You will not, uh, not have to import coal. Because you have so much of renewable energy, you will be able to make green hydrogen cheap and export green hydrogen. Everybody will need green hydrogen because everybody is going to decarbonize. Everybody is saying that I will get to net zero in CR so and so here. You need green hydrogen. Green hydrogen can play a pivotal role in decarbonizing the hard to abate sectors like petrochemicals, steel and cement, where the gas emission is very high. Well, the government has adopted a coordinated approach. And how? Let's find out. Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas will facilitate uptake of green hydrogen in refineries and city gas distribution through both public sector entities and private sector. Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers will encourage adoption of indigenous green ammonia-based fertilizers for progressively replacing imports of fertilizers and fossil fuel-based feedstocks. Ministry of Road Transport and Highways will enable adoption of green hydrogen in the transport sector through regulations, standards and codes primarily for heavy commercial vehicles and long-haul operations. Ministry of Steel will drive adoption of green hydrogen in the steel sector. It will identify and facilitate pilot projects for use of green hydrogen in steel production and undertake policy measures to accelerate commercial production of green steel. Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways will play a crucial role in establishing India's export capabilities for green hydrogen and its derivatives. It will facilitate development of the required infrastructure including storage bunkers, port operations equipment and refueling facilities. Ministry of Railways will work on transitioning towards adoption of green hydrogen in their operations in view of its ambitious plans to reduce the carbon footprint. Ministry of Commerce and Industry will encourage investments, facilitate ease of doing business and implement specific industrial and trade policy measures for low-cost production. India will not be a country who is going to import energy, but India will be the country who is going to export energy. So that is the future of the hydrogen. I think the movement forward, no matter which way you look at it, India has done well on availability, affordability by and large, and the sustainability front. The overarching objective of the mission is to make India the global hub for production, usage and export of green hydrogen and its derivatives. This will contribute to India's aim to become Art Nirbhar or self-reliant through clean energy and serve as an inspiration to global clean energy transition. The mission will lead to significant decarbonization of the economy, reduce dependence on fossil fuel imports and enable India to assume technology and market leadership in green hydrogen. The mission also aims to make India a leader in technology and manufacturing of electrolyzers and other enabling technologies for green hydrogen.
in the initial stage two distinct financial incentive mechanisms are proposed with an outlay of 17,490 crore up to 2029-30. This includes incentive for manufacturing of electrolyzers and incentive for production of green hydrogen. Depending on the markets and technology development, specific incentive schemes and programs will continue to evolve as the mission progresses. Well, viewers, let's get to the heart of green hydrogen, the electrolyzers, where water is split into hydrogen and oxygen. But how do they function? Let's find out. So please help us understand the functioning of electrolyzers. So an electrolyzer is a device which breaks water whose composition is H2O into hydrogen and oxygen. Here what we see is the electrolyzer cell which is uh, connected through electricity and also here we are feeding water into the electrolyzer cell. This water which is hydrogen and combination of hydrogen and oxygen gets split into the electrolyzer cell uh, into its constituents, hydrogen and oxygen, and we collect hydrogen gas into this balloon. In hydrogen, we've started actually, I would say, as at par with the rest of the world. Uh, we launched our mission early this year, in January, of course. And uh, our target is to achieve a production capacity of 5 million metric tons per annum by 2030, which is just seven years from now. And again, like our renewable energy target, this is some target that we have is ambitious but we are also very certain of reaching it. The reason is that we are, we have set very, you know, a lot of milestones and specific time bound program to achieve that. For example, we have a huge incentive scheme, which is 17 and a half thousand crore, where which will incentivize the green hydrogen producers. It will incentivize production, manufacturing of electrolyzers in India. Uh, in fact, the first bridges are just closing uh, right now. जब तक इसकी खपत नहीं बढ़ेगी, जब तक इसकी डिमांड नहीं बढ़ेगी, ये कीमतें नीचे नहीं आएगी। तो इसी संदर्भ में इंडियन कॉरपोरेशन पानीपत रिफाइनरी में एक 10 केटीए का एक प्लांट लगाने जा रहा है ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन का। इसी तरह से हमारे जो 11 रिफाइनरीज हैं, सभी जगह हम ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन के प्लांट � इसके दाम भी नीचे आएंगे और जब दाम नीचे आएंगे तो ये और पॉपुलराइज होगा और प्रधानमंत्री का जो एक मिशन है जो विजन है कि इंडिया एक ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब बने जिसमें एक्सपोर्ट भी हो ये पूरा उनका विजन साकार होगा। Green hydrogen or ammonia manufacturers may purchase renewable energy from the power exchange or set up renewable energy capacity themselves or through any other developer anywhere. Open access will be granted within 15 days of receipt of application. The green hydrogen manufacturer can bank his unconsumed renewable power up to 30 days with distribution company and take it back when required. Distribution licensees can also procure and supply renewable energy to the manufacturers of green hydrogen in their states at concessional prices, which will only include the cost of procurement, wheeling charges and a small margin as determined by the State Commission. Waiver of interstate transmission charges for a period of 25 years will be allowed to the manufacturers of green hydrogen and green ammonia for the projects commissioned before 30 June 2025. The manufacturers of green hydrogen and the renewable energy plant shall be given connectivity to the grid on priority basis to avoid any procedural delays. The benefit of renewable purchase obligation will be granted incentive to the hydrogen manufacturer and the distribution licensee for consumption of renewable power. To ensure ease of doing business, a single portal for carrying out all the activities, including statutory clearances in a time-bound manner, will be set up by MNRE. The production of green hydrogen in India presents a multitude of advantages that align seamlessly with the nation's aspirations for sustainable development, bolstered energy security and consensuous envi environmental conservation. In the recent years, pilot projects have been undertaken in India for production of green hydrogen through electrolysis of water, using renewable electricity and from biomass through thermochemical and biochemical routes. The mission aims to develop and scale up green hydrogen production technology and make it affordable and widely accessible. The cost of electrolyzers and input renewable energy are two major components of green hydrogen production costs. 
the costs of capital, supply and treatment of water, storage, distribution, conversion of hydrogen to suitable derivatives and enabling infrastructure would also contribute significantly to the final delivered cost of green hydrogen for any particular application. The mission seeks to undertake the necessary steps to enable cost reduction in all these aspects. Around 500 million tons of green hydrogen will be needed to reach zero emissions by 2050. Putting that in other terms, that's the equivalent of 6 billion acres of trees being planted. We anticipate that 130 billion US dollars will be spent on green hydrogen through 2030. India has both the potential and the ambition to be a key driving force in the green hydrogen transition given its highly skilled workforce, strong manufacturing basis, and deep technology in the green hydrogen areas. Well, now that we've produced hydrogen, how do we convert it into energy that can be used in the entire mobility spectrum? From powering your cars, to the buses, to airplanes, to ships. Well, the answer is hydrogen fuel cell. Let's understand its function. Sir, help us understand the function of hydrogen fuel cell. So when we have produced hydrogen, now that hydrogen, it has to be used in the mobility sector, we have to compress it and store on board on the vehicle. Now once that hydrogen has been stored on board, we can use that hydrogen to power any vehicle. Here in this fuel cell, we are not combusting or burning hydrogen. We are directly getting the energy from the hydrogen in the form of electricity. And the fuel cell is a device which gets the hydrogen as an incoming fuel and it converts it into electricity. And the exhaust is absolutely pure water. Considering the renewable energy potential and the enabling framework proposed under the mission, India's green hydrogen production costs are expected to be among the lowest in the world. A global demand of over 100 million metric tonne of green hydrogen and its derivatives like green ammonia is expected to emerge by 2030. Many countries are likely to rely on imports due to constraints on land and renewable resources required to produce green hydrogen domestically. Aiming at about 10% of the global market, India can potentially export about 10 million metric ton green hydrogen. From being an element in the periodic table, hydrogen became the mission for my life. It was in 2009 when I embarked on this journey of Swadeshi Urja for Swavalambi Bharat to bring energy independence to India, to bring energy to the farmers of our country, to bring energy to the rural hinterlands of the country. And this took me through a journey of building India's first homegrown electrolyzer and fuel cell company. And 14 years now, we are strong and we are setting up large scale projects to become world leaders. The mission will also identify and develop regions capable of supporting large-scale production or utilization of green hydrogen as green hydrogen hubs. Development of necessary infrastructure for such hubs will be supported under the mission. It is planned to set up at least two such green hydrogen hubs in the initial phase. A public-private partnership framework for R&D will be facilitated under the mission. The framework will entail creation of a dedicated R&D fund with contributions from industry and respective government institutions. These institutions will pool resources to build a comprehensive, goal-oriented research and innovation program in collaboration with the private sector. In 2030, India will be greatly in a leadership position across the world. And while uh, um, all the developer nations are working on various technologies to advance the whole of these programs, and they are very optimistic uh, looking at 2030s and 35. But I am pretty sure uh, India will be leading this whole uh, green hydrogen race and as well as uh, uh, exporting these green molecules uh, to the world. In 2020, India's hydrogen demand stood at 6 million tons per year. It is estimated that by 2030, the hydrogen costs will be down by 50%. The demand for hydrogen is expected to see a five-fold jump to 28 million tonne by 2050, whereas 80% of the demand is expected to be green in nature. Some of the prominent industrial mammoths plan to foray into green hydrogen space. India 
has also declared its ambition to become an exporter of hydrogen to Japan, South Korea and Europe. Infrastructure development, including port development in Kandla, Tutikorin, Gopalpur, Paradeep, etc., is actively underway to facilitate exports. What sets India apart is the best wind and solar resource, coupled with the government's tangible commitment evidenced by these budgetary allocations, swift policy implementation, and fund deployment through bids. India is at a critical juncture in terms of its energy landscape and green hydrogen has a critical role to play to make the nation energy independent. This transition can be synergistic with the scale, ambition and economic competitiveness of its renewable energy. Unlike fossil fuels which have resource and geography constraints, green hydrogen can be produced anywhere in India as it is blessed with the ample renewable potential. This will enable the emergence of an energy carrier that is domestically produced, reducing the dependence on imports for key energy commodities like natural gas and petroleum. Hydrogen can be an energy molecule that is truly made in India that can contribute to country's energy security and long-term economic competitiveness. Well, viewers, that's all I had for you in this edition with camera person Jeanette and camera assistant Lev Kush. With hopes of a greener future, I'm Kriti Mishra signing off for Sunset Television.